The classic symptoms of peripheral arterial disease are pain in the legs when usually with exertion when people are walking. Uh, it's often in the calves, it'll occur after a certain distance of walking and then when people stop and rest the pain goes away. For people who have very advanced peripheral arterial disease they can have pain in their feet at rest. Uh, they can even have ulcers on their legs or feet that don't heal in a normal amount of time. Atherosclerosis is a vascular abnormality that causes plaque deposition in your arteries throughout your body and depending on where the maximum buildup is, that's where you have symptoms. When you use the term peripheral arterial disease, you're talking about impaired circulation to the legs. The risk factors are things that you can easily take inventory of. Do you have a family history of heart disease or peripheral arterial disease? Are you diabetic? Do you smoke cigarettes? Do you have high blood pressure? Those are all of the things that put you at risk for developing plaque in your arteries that can impair circulation. Well, the first step in diagnosing peripheral arterial disease is to take a good history. If patients have symptoms compatible with poor circulation, uh, that would prompt further testing. On physical exam, you can feel people's pulses in their feet and for folks who have poor circulation, they may not have pulses. Testing for this with other modalities would be an ankle brachial index. That's the simplest way to screen for peripheral arterial disease. In that way, you compare the pressures in the arms to those in the legs and feet. And if there's a big differential, this suggests poor circulation. From there, you can do ultrasound or CT angiography. Both of these are non-invasive ways to image the arteries and the legs. Ultimately, the most definitive test for peripheral arterial disease is angiography, where you inject dye directly into the arteries and visualize them. The medical treatment options for treating peripheral arterial disease center on controlling people's risk factors. The most important is smoking cessation. For people who smoke, that's a huge risk factor for peripheral arterial disease and they need to quit. For folks with high cholesterol, they should be on a statin. Diabetics need to get their sugar under control. Antiplatelet medicines such as aspirin and Plavix are often helpful. A regular exercise program is very beneficial. Sometimes patients are afraid to exercise because it makes their legs hurt. It turns out that this is beneficial because it recruits new blood vessel growth. For people who have continued symptoms despite medical therapy of peripheral arterial disease, there are two general approaches to achieving revascularization or improving blood flow in the legs. One is a traditional surgical bypass procedure. The other is a catheter-based technique to improve blood flow in the legs. Before either one of these can be performed, you need to have a traditional angiogram of the legs as a road map so that you can know which approach would be best. The catheter-based options are numerous. There's balloons, stents, devices that remove plaque from the artery, these catheter-based techniques are generally less harsh on the patient and the recovery time is much quicker than traditional surgical bypass procedures. In addition to knowing that there are a variety of treatment options, you need to know that you need to be involved in your care and be proactive about modifying your risk factors. The other important thing is that Peripheral arterial disease means that you have generalized vascular disease or atherosclerosis. It just so happens that you're having symptoms in your legs because that's where the buildup is the worst. Having atherosclerosis or vascular disease means you're at risk of having heart attack or stroke. So you should be screened for symptoms that might be cardiac or that might be neurologic.
Choosing the right doctor is always a very personal decision, but in this case you need to choose someone who has experience dealing with vascular problems. People who have peripheral arterial disease often have coronary disease as well. And it turns out that cardiologists are often the ones that deal with both problems. The skills that we use to manage coronary artery disease or blockages in the coronary arteries are the same skills that we use to treat blockages in the legs using catheter-based techniques that are similar in both areas.